Hi, Dr. Yas here. I feel compelled to talk about the diagnosis of SI joint dysfunction as the appropriate diagnosis for people suffering from gluteal region pain. It is one of the great excessively overused and misrepresented diagnoses, the equivalent of sciatica coming from altered structural variations in the lumbar spine, the equivalent of people being told they're bone on bone in a joint when they still have full range of motion. There's a multitude of diagnoses that are banted around and yet the physical evidence is so extensive that that cannot be the cause of the pain that as a person who treats based on the interpretation of symptoms and looks at the body's presentation of symptoms to logically establish what tissue is eliciting the pain, it is so repulsive to be contacted from people all over the country and now even all over the world being told that they have SI joint dysfunction as the cause of their gluteal region pain. And when I present the facts as to what the physical presentation would be if you had that as the cause versus the physical presentation if you didn't have that as the cause, they are stunned to find that in almost every case, I mean almost every case, they don't have the symptoms that you would expect to have to have for you to accept that diagnosis as the cause of your pain. And the reality is that the people who are providing the diagnosis have no basis of understanding your physical presentation to determine whether it's valid or not anyway. So that's why in almost all cases, the diagnosis is given incorrectly. I believe in some cases, some people will say, oh, I found an x-ray and it showed some arthritic change, so that's the reason to justify it. I am told by innumerable people, they go to physical therapists and physical therapists don't have x-rays and yet they're told simply because of some whacked out reason, I don't even know the justification for it, that the person has SI joint dysfunction as the cause of their gluteal region pain. My suspicion is that just as I was expressing that there are a multitude of diagnoses that are clearly based on physical presentation, incapable of creating the symptoms you're experiencing, I also believe that the multitude of medical practitioners that practice based on their educational background are being educated to believe and accept things that are without question all the evidence presenting that what they're being taught and treated based upon is completely invalid, just simply false. So that's why I look to put these types of videos on multiple social media because it is basically impossible for you as the individual who is going to the medical system to get some sort of understanding why you're having your gluteal region sy symptoms and getting procedures and treatments and yet it's not working. You are still going to go out there. I, I know how people are. I've been doing this for 23 years. I've seen thousands of people. You're out there. You want a resolution to your symptoms. You want to get the quality of life back that you're searching for. So you'll keep going out there looking for an answer. Well, here's your answer. This is the legitimate understanding of why people have symptoms. Let's be absolutely clear. The YAS method ignores diagnostic test findings. It does not accept the classic diagnoses that are given and have been perpetuated by the medical establishment, it actually is smarter in its understanding. It actually says that the body is trying to elicit symptoms to indicate that a tissue is in distress. That's why you have pain and altered symptoms. It is the body's attempt to give you an understanding as to what tissue is in distress and eliciting those symptoms. The goal is to create conscious awareness of the distress of the tissue so an intervention can be performed to resolve the distress of the tissue. You don't treat the symptoms, you treat the distress of the tissue. When the distress of the tissue is resolved, there's no longer a reason to elicit the symptoms and they simply cease. So if someone is telling you, think about this logically, if someone is telling you the cause of your gluteal region pain is SI joint dysfunction, what they're saying is that there is distress of the SI joint and therefore the joint is eliciting pain.
by nature, by definition, that's what it means. So is there a physical presentation of symptoms that would indicate that a, t that a joint is in distress? And conversely, are there symptoms that would indicate that the joint is not in distress? Right? So that's what we're talking about here. What are the symptoms that indicate that a joint is in distress? What are the symptoms that would indicate it's not in distress? So if I can present that to you, then I don't care who tells you what. I don't care if you go to the Mayo Clinic or the Cleveland Clinic or wherever you want to go or whoever's trying to instruct you that there's this doctor or that doctor. You simply have to look at the facts. The fact is that if a joint is in distress, it will present specific symptoms to identify it. If a joint is not in distress, then those symptoms will be what you see. So let's talk about what is the SI joint and what would you expect to see in a healthy joint? What would you expect to see if the joint was actually in distress and eliciting symptoms? So the joint is called the sacroiliac joint because it combines the sacral spine and the iliac aspect of the pelvis. So it is where the connection of the spine to the pelvis joins together. The purpose being that we eventually have to support our torsos and our upper body and our head. And so this weight eventually has to be transferred down through the pelvis, finally down to the legs, to the floor, as the floor ultimately is where gravity is pulling these forces and they have to eventually get supported at the floor. So that's why we have an SI joint, okay? It is a joint that allows the forces of the torso, weight of the torso, to then be transferred to the pelvis, down to the legs and to the floor. Now, it is a joint, and so as a result, it's a flat joint, and it is connected by ligaments, a fairly dense level of ligaments. Now, because it's a joint, movement occurs there. So if we were looking at your ability to pull your knee towards your chest, which is known as hip flexion, bringing your knee towards your chest, we would see the iliac aspect of the pelvis move forward, rotate forward while the sacral aspect is maintained in the proper position. So we would kind of see this happening to the iliac aspect of the SI joint while the sacral portion remains in position, okay? If there was such a level of arthritic change in the SI joint, which is why you would have dysfunction of a joint. A joint is nothing more than a place with a pivot point where motion occurs. So its purpose is simply to allow motion to occur. If there was some sort of diminishment of this range of motion, this ability to, uh, to have motion occur, it would only happen because an arthritic change or some structural variation has occurred to prevent it. So typically we're looking at an arthritic change. If that were the case and we were having pain, let's say, on the left side in the gluteal region, I would try to bring my knee towards my chest on the right side and sense how far I could bring it, and then I'd bring the left. I would have to have a major inability to bring my knee towards my chest on the left with the feeling that if I was to try to bring it any further, it would feel like a bone is hitting another bone. Literally, I would feel an inability to move it any farther sensing like a bone was touching another bone, and I would also feel pain at that SI joint while I was bringing my knee towards my chest. In the vast majority of people, almost every person, pretty much every person I've ever treated, when I've checked them for knee flexion, the ability to bring the knee towards the chest on the affected side where they're having the gluteal region pain versus the unaffected side, the range of motion was identical. It simply is not there. There is no loss of range of motion at the SI joint. The other aspect that you want to look at is the ability to bring the leg out to the side. That is called hip abduction and adduction. So when the leg is brought out to the side, we would see compression. If this is the, uh, the iliac portion and this is the um, sacral portion, we would see them squeeze together when we're doing abduction. And then we'd see them open up when we're doing adduction, pulling it back in. So again, we would want to, if we're having pain at the left gluteal region, we would have the right leg be moved out as far as we can and then bring it back. And then we would move the left side out as far as we can to the side. And if there was an arthritic change enough to cause the joint to elicit pain, then we would see a severe limitation in range of motion. And as I tried to push it out farther, it would feel like a bone was hitting another bone, limiting it. It's not pain. 
It's the actual limitation of motion due to a feeling that a bone is hitting another bone, and we would simultaneously also expect to feel pain at that SI joint. Same situation as with the bending, pulling the knee towards the chest. In almost every case, if not every case I've done over these 23 years, the range of motion was equal. Okay? So let's be absolutely clear. No loss of range of motion, inflection of the knee, bringing the knee towards the chest, or bringing the leg out to the side, abduction. There is nothing wrong with your SI joint. End the discussion there. If you have that and you're having gluteal region pain, trust me, it has nothing to do with the SI joint. So all this psychotic treatment, things like, I don't even know what an SI joint belt means, but people tell me that they're told to use an SI joint belt. I don't know what it means. The, the joint is a place where range of motion occurs. So what wearing a belt, what does that do with that? I, I don't know. But if you have full range of motion, your pain is not coming from the SI joint. It is more likely, and almost in every case I've ever treated, the result of the piriformis muscle straining. The reason that I can say that is because the piriformis muscle happens to attach to the sacral spine right to the side where the SI joint exists and runs diagonal past the SI joint to the hip joint in the gluteal region and elicits pain at its attachment near the SI joint, near the sacral spine, its actual attachment where the muscle attaches. So we could look at a multitude of things to indicate that it's the piriformis muscle. We could see if you have decreased strength of your hip abductor, your gluteus medius muscle. If that were the case, well, the piriformis would strain due to uh, the inability of the gluteus medius to support you. And so when it tries to compensate, it strains and elicits pain. We could look at flexibility. Uh, we could take the knee of the side, oh, well, always on the unaffected side first, take the uh, unaffected knee, bring it towards the opposite shoulder, see if you have pain and loss of range of motion, flexibility, loss of flexibility of your piriformis. Now, take the affected knee on the side that you're having your symptom, bring it towards the opposite shoulder, see if you can bring it as far, or if it's limited in range of motion and you're getting pain in the gluteal region. You just confirm that it's the piriformis muscle that's the cause. We could uh, look at where your pain is, try to feel, is it just near the sacral spine? Or can I feel from the sacral spine, run diagonal across the gluteal region and see if I can find pain away from the SI joint? If I can sustain the pain level all the way across from the sacral spine, across the gluteal region to near the hip joint, following the path of the piriformis, then clearly it's the piriformis because the SI joint can't refer pain along the piriformis muscle. So this is what I'm trying to express to you is that the YAS method is the only method that's actually trying to interpret the presentation of symptoms that are being created by the body. You need to be able to differentiate whether it's the SI joint or the piriformis muscle. You can't just blindly say it's the SI joint because, I mean, it's so sad to say that because you were told that or taught that in school that somehow that means it's right. It simply is not. The overwhelming evidence proves that's invalid. So my answer to you is if you don't want to waste your time and go to a, a medical doctor or any other medical practitioner and assume they're going to tell you it's the SI joint when in more than 98% of cases it's not, get the information through the YAS method, whether it's my books, whether it's getting a Skype evaluation, whether it's coming to my office in St. Augustine. I don't really care how you do it, but it's the only true way that you're going to get the proper diagnosis. So if you want to get more information, you can contact me through going through my website at www.mitchellyas.com. You can email me at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. That's D-R-M-I-T-C-H at M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S dot com. You can call me on my cell phone, 516-449-1359. I'm more than happy to listen to your situations and help try to guide you towards a resolution of your symptoms. You will never have your symptoms resolved if you don't get the right information. The only way to get the right information when we're talking about resolution of pain or symptoms is to interpret what the body is telling you to help you understand what tissues in distress you need to resolve the distress of that tissue and that tissue alone to cause the need for the symptom to no longer be presented and that's what causes it to cease. You've got one shot in my mind, and that is to use the YAS method. So for now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye.